Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Jonathan Gave. He was an engineer for 20-ish years, and now he does project management training. He enjoys foreign languages, and he helps people create presentations in English. I have Kelly Stewart. She is a strength-based approach to leadership coaching. She does conversations worth having and appreciative inquiry. And I have Rick Alcantara, public relations, digital marketing, crisis communication at Rick Alcantara Consulting. The question I have for you today, what is the difference between being calm and being bored? And can one become the other? Jonathan, kick us off. That's a pretty interesting thing to think about. When I think about being bored, I think about it as a state that I do not see. It is a state that I want to leave. Mm. It's a state where I don't feel that I have control. And frankly, it makes me nervous sometimes as I I want to leave this state. It's like an absence of stimulation. I, I confess it's rare for me. When I think of calm, I think about a state that I want to be in. There could be a lot of other things going on. In fact, I'd be proud to be calm in the face of a lot of stimulation. I feel that it's a state where I have control. And I confess that it's a state that's sometimes hard for me to achieve. Mm. Uh, To achieve it, I try to organize. I try to write things down. That's good for a project manager and engineer. Uh, I do also like to study. That's something that calms me down. Mm. Okay. That's awesome. I think in the age of social media, it's hard to uh, stay calm um, because the social media algorithms just keep feeding you content, keep feeding you more things. So if they find something that you like, they're going to feed more of it. If they find something that you looked at, they're going to send you more. It's an always on kind of environment. So that's why people struggle with, uh, you know, attention. They struggle with sleep, uh, which I do, simply because it can be overpowering. So I'm never bored but I can get stressed uh, just you know, dealing with it. So uh, finding calm sometimes is tough. I've just got to put the phone and say, look, it's in the other room. I'm not going to touch it. You know, I'm not going to look on the computer. It's a real different ball game. Oh, so that's interesting. So boredom leads to looking at your phone, which leads to lack of calmness. Oh, exactly. interesting. Okay. Kelly, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, it was a great question. I agree with my first thought went to emotions and how our emotions might influence this. And when I think about being calm, I think about a feeling of serenity. And I think that it's in those times when I'm able to have a broader self-view and a broader worldview. And then that will sometimes lead me to be thinking, now what action can I take? Which would be the reverse of being bored, which I have to say, getting ready for this call is like, I don't think I've used the words I'm bored in about 25 years. So that gives you a little insight into me. Mm. But um, I think that that serenity feeds that sense of, oh, I have this bigger picture. I see things from my helicopter. What am I going to do about that? And then that makes me curious and it makes me want to expand my knowledge and grow in some way or become involved in something. And so I see it being very kind of what am I feeling? And I know by what I'm feeling where I need to be, because I think uh, stress, Rick, I'm with you. I'm in that boat. You know, when you get bored, it it is kind of stressful. John, I want to be out of it. From what I remember, I don't really like being bored (laughs) and it's not good to always be on either. So you see where I think having that calm state of mind, feeling that serenity, that peace, that tranquility, however it comes, I think is what enables me then to decide more wisely what I'm going to do next so I won't be bored. That's (laughs) interesting. I think that calm, in my case at least, calm doesn't lead to being bored. Calm, if anything, leads me to more power, more activities. Mm -hmm. Uh, Being bored doesn't lead me to any good place. So calmness is obviously a good thing. We like that, especially in if things are frantic, calmness is good. I'm wondering if boredom, like if we were to notice boredom, if we could change it to calmness, could I say, oh, this is nice. I can take a break. I wonder if that's a thing. I've had that thought. I don't know if I can do it, but I remember reading somewhere about one person giving advice to another saying, you know, it's not a bad thing to be bored. You you don't have to dislike it. Thinking about that made me think maybe I should change my opinion about boredom. I often will give clients the recommendation. Back when we used to drive places in cars on a regular basis, I used to say to them, turn the radio off and give your brain a break from input. Mm -hmm. And they're like, but then I'll be bored. And I'm like, and then your subconscious will have a chance to speak and breathe and give you ideas. You can't come up with ideas if you're constantly having input. Right. Plus, if the radio is off, you can't be yelling at the commentators on that. On the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. So I think that's the other thing too, is that we collectively view boredom as a bad thing when maybe it would be better if we just took it as some calmness. Yeah. And I've, I've actually taken your advice on that and, and being in the car and turning the radio off. And I find that I, I come up with some amazing ideas when I've just got that silence because I'm locked in, especially if I'm sitting in traffic. I'm just like, okay, I just need to like unwind here. I can't do this. Maybe I'll put on some real light music in the background or something, but it really does help. Mm -hmm. I keep a pad of paper in the car for that reason. You write when you drive. Uh, we, not sometime when I stop. We do not recommend enjoy. writing while driving. That's a good point. That's a very good point. But if you have a phone that is voice activated, I can tell my phone to take notes. Yes. Yeah. I've done That's that true. for sure. Um, having that quiet time, even just memories. Sometimes the memories of what we've done well or high point experiences, that's something too that can help us increase that sense of calmness, but also give us confidence to do what we want to do next, to not be bored, to positively and proactively not be bored. Right? Because I think, I agree, you can look at a lot of the stimulus that we are exposed to every day and feel Ooh, like this is bad, it's getting worse, it could happen to me. And if I keep going down that rabbit hole, I'm going to feel that way. But if I stand up from that and think, oh, okay, so what else might be going on? If I ask myself that question, then I might look for different resources, different articles, experts, whatever that might be. And when that doesn't work, I used to go into Pet Finder and because who doesn't find a very cute puppy, very relaxing. That's like a quick fix. It's like an injection for me. Mm -hmm. But in, in lieu of that, just finding those more um, action oriented resources helps me to get back into a state of being calm because then I've got that broader view. I have more things to pull from in my toolkit. For me, my, my period of relaxation is in the morning. I get up and I go to the gym and I work out and have mm -hmm. some music going in the background, but I'm actually don't have any responsibilities for business or for home or anything else. So I can just kind of think about things, focus on things, works out well. I use my gym time to listen to books. So that doesn't really help with the calmness. But one thing that I've realized in adulthood, I didn't realize other people didn't do. I tell myself stories. Like I make up fiction stories when my brain is quiet. And I, I learned as an adult that other people don't do that with their quiet time. No, I don't. But I like these ideas of thinking of something that we can do to bring us to a calm state that are quick. Like you said, Kelly, maybe looking at certain pictures or having certain memories. The things that I do take time. You know, mm. I must study for like an hour, then I get calm, but that takes an hour. It right. would be nice to have something that would take my mind to a calmer state quickly. Thank you. My mm -hmm. pleasure. Yeah, this is a great conversation. Yeah, the other thing I like to do too is like to read for the last day, maybe 20 minutes before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. so there's that everything else that I had going on during the day. And now I'm just kind of focused on what's in the book. And then I, when my eyes start getting too heavy and the, and the lines start blurring, okay, time <laughs> to close the book, go to bed. <laughs> so do you read fiction then at that point? No, believe it or not, I read about politics and it still, oh. like, still relaxes me, believe it or not. No. <laughs> Actually, I find reading, I've been reading uh, books on foreign policy sometimes because it's so different than engineering. There are no formulas, nothing to prove, no mm. math that means anything. I find it interesting for that same reason. And I also like to read for a, a few minutes before bed and read actual paper document magazine or book mm. because my books and magazines don't interrogate me and tell me I should be buying something or that my life should be different <laughs> but if I look at something online invariably I'm going to see some challenge to my calm state so mm. it has to be paper for me so do you think that boredom and calmness are similar and that boredom has angst and stress related to it where calmness is just okay there's nothing going on and that's okay i think they're very different for me i feel boredom with activities you know i i don't want to be bored so that's why i join you know different groups and different associations and i'm doing this volunteer thing and that volunteer thing and years ago i would coach two or three soccer teams in one season plus teaching at a college plus running a business i, I filled every minute of every day it's not as a psychologist problem. i could say you might be running away from something your subconscious is yeah. trying to tell you but that's a whole separate conversation <laughs> exactly <laughs> um, opposite and interrelated when you ask the question i was thinking about you know you can't have a dark without light, morning without night, right? These things, mm. that there's a, a relationship between the two of them that I have not really fully explored, but I do think that they are related in some way. Maybe they feed one another in some ways. I think that's kind of what we've been talking about here. I think on the back of this conversation, I'm going to pay more attention 
to when I'm bored and when I'm calm and what it feels like, because I want to understand that more. And I think that that's a really good place for us to end a 10 minute conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you you. weren't bored and I look forward to speaking to you all again really soon.